Chapter 49, 56. I really got a good quality of sleep this time. No sad dream but for some reason questionable dream. I got a daughter which also got white haired like me with her plump cheek that made me want to pinch her face all the time. Well, a dream is a dream. In the end, I have to wake up to the real world. Waking up, what I see in front of me is Alicia sleeping there. Ha, huh, maybe this time is my fault to let her in easily. I thought while waking up from my bed without waking her up. Belle seems already awake and checking outside which already turned dark. Ugh ugh. Mmm. Welf and Lily looked like about to awake which got our attention. Nisan. You are awake. He said with a low voice. This. Where are we? Welf the first time to say something. Belle Sama. Lily said after looking at Belle. Lily. Welf San. Are you both okay? Belle said quickly after they opened their eyes. Are you guys remember me? He said in a panic. Lily won't ever forget Belsama's face. She said weakly. Yeah. If I could hear Lily spouting nonsense then I'm pretty much okay. Welf said commenting at Lily. Aegeus San, are you inside? Someone said from outside. Yeah, I'm inside. What is it? I said answering him which made Welf shocked at where he's at. Br. Braver. And also, the new rumored king. Welf said in surprise. Are you not gonna have dinner with us again, Aegeus? Finn said since after Rivas decided to follow me. She never took a meal with Loki Familia or Hephaestus Familia which made me also accompany her in the tent. Yeah, I guess I'm not. I said while looking at how the crowd in my room. Okay, I will be on my way then. Finn said before leaving. The reason he let me took my meal on my own with his familia member is actually to watch over Rivas. He still hasn't trust her yet while neither do I at the first few nights but with time, I kinda relax a little bit when sleeping under the same tent with her also with additional Tiona in the tent. It's not that I didn't prepare if she decided to attack me but when I'm about to let her sleep by herself, I got a new passive, god hand, which made me relax a little. Berserker skill to get him back to life after being killed and made him immune to the object that killed him. Ha, huh, I heard about your brother, Bell San but seeing him for myself really startled me. Welf said toward Bell. Welf tried to sit up and check his injury but noticed no wound could be seen anywhere. It's okay, Welf San. My brother healed all of us. Bell said with a little laugh. Mm -n 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 -n. What with all the noise, Aegeus? Tiona said waking up from her sleep. Ace also wake up and sit there without any consciousness yet. Alicia eventually sat there but doing somewhat a sexy pose with some messy clothes in my bed. Oh ho I never knew your brother is a true man. You might become like that when you grew up, Belle. Welf said looking at all the beauty in the room especially Alicia which slept with me in the same bed. Aegeus, Sama. Alicia mumbled her words before frozen stiff after waking up. All she saw is my back and my head that turned to look at her. I. I. I'm sorry, Aegeus Sama. I didn't mean to. Alicia quickly tidying her clothes and sit straight avoiding me. No, it's fine, Alicia. Anyway, let's eat. I said while stretching my body, you too, Welf San right? Nice to meet you. Also you too, Lily. I said while walking toward Rivas that's still asleep. Rivas, wake up. I said tapping her cheek. No. I want meat. She talking in her sleep. I let her sleep for a little more while giving all the food I could in the middle of the group that already sit down on the ground. Ayah. I would never think that you really are Belle's brother. Even though if people looked closely you're the same with that white hair but both your demeanor is totally different. Welf said after drinking his cup. Ahaha. Couldn't be helped on that. I said while giving him a toss after he pours another drink. Thank you for protecting my little brother and sorry if he brought you some problem. I said with a wide smile. Hahaha. Ha ha. No problem but it should be the other way. Belle had helped me on so many occasions. Welf said back. By the way, you should be in the same familia as Belle right? But why are you in the same tent with Loki familia? Welf said asking a quiet sensitive question. You. How dare you questioning him? Alicia lashed out at Welf. I quickly stop her before she tried to strike him with her fork. Well. I had my own problem that I couldn't tell right now but you will know later on. I said while ruffling Belle's hair. It's okay, Welf San. 
My brother always had his own reason. Belle said assuring him. Well, if you say so. Welf said agreeing with Belle. Oh, Revis. You wake up. We got a ton of meat here. Come eat. I said after noticing someone sit up from her cover. She looked at me with a little confusion before crawling over to us. Nay. Belle Kuhn, mind telling me how you got your S-status? Tiona said after she's done eating and already climbing on my back. Ah oh no. I don't really know but I'm sure Nissan got it also, right? Belle said after noticing the last sparring. Ah. All of you went and eat without me. Someone shouted at the door and Tioni standing there. Eh. Aren't you about to eat with Captain and the other? Why are you here, Tioni? Tiona asked her with slight confusion. That's not your concern. Anyway, give me some. Tioni said before we heard someone shouting in the distance. No. Wow wow wow. Someone shouted loudly made my ears perked up a little bit, TCH. This voice. I said while looking at Belle. Both of us quickly walked outside toward the source of the voice. Just as I thought. I said while covering my face. You wow. No one told me that there is a giant monster. She said while laying on the ground. She quickly sat up on the spot before hearing a footstep coming toward her. We stare at her for a few seconds and what irritated me is her face when she stared at me. She made an annoyed face as if telling me that it would be better if only Belle there. I reply with also annoyed face toward her. Kamisama. Belle muttered his words and Hestia quickly moved to tackle him, Belle Kuen. She said while pouncing at him. Little did she knew, I was prepared. I raised my leg which met with her face right in the middle of her face, Bugu. She stopped on her track. Aegeus Kuen. You know that it's not nice to kick goddess's face right? She said with a tick mark and a dark smile on her face. I know about that but your face is asking for it. I said glaring at her. Kemisama, Nisan stop it already. Belle said while trying to meddle in between us. Anyway. Hestia said with a glint on her eyes. Belle Kuen. You are safe. This is really you right? Hestia said with another pounce to him which I let her this time. Hestia crying with real tears touching Belle's face, I'm sorry for making you worry, Kamisama. Belle said in a soft voice. Belle Kuen. Thank you for staying safe. Belle dash, Kuen. Hestia said about to kiss Belle but stopped by Lily behind her. She pulled Hestia's body backward making her fall. Rest it easy, Hestia-sama. She said to prevent losing to Hestia. Stop it right there. Don't you disturb our romantic reunion. Hestia quickly said. The other also came while Tioni still eating her food. Ayahak. Wallen what is it? Why are you here? Hestia said while pointing to Ace with her feet. Lily and Hestia fight on the ground while Belle watched with a somewhat embarrassed face. I somewhat a little amused watching both of them. Without realizing someone approaching me with high speed. I looked in reflex toward the sound and someone already tackled me down to the ground. Everyone stopped in what they are doing and looked at me on the ground with a girl on top of me. You. Vixen. How dare you. Alicia launched herself with a sword in hand. Opening gate of Babylon, a sword sticking out from it and blocking her strike. The girl on top of me is Ryu and she's kissing me out of the blue. You shouldn't do it like that, Ryu. I said after both of our lips parted away. I miss you. It's been a few weeks after all. Ryu said with a smile. Alicia had been stunned for a second after her strike being blocked. It's alright Alicia. I knew you mean good but it's fine. This is Ryu, my girlfriend. I said looking at Alicia behind Ryu. One of your girlfriend. Ryu said teasing me for some reason. She took a step back in shock and quickly bowing deeply, I'm sorry for my incompetence. She said sincerely. I quickly stand up with Ryu and walk to Alicia, I told you it's fine. I said before going back to the other. Don't take it too hard. You're Alicia-san, right? I'm not angry after your attempt to strike me. Ryu said smiling at her. Because you also like him right? He already noticed it. You just need to talk with him. Ryu added more when walked past her in a whisper so only Alicia could hear her. Alicia quickly turned her head after listening to it and looked at Ryo that walking behind me. E. That's cheating. I also want a kiss too. Tiona said while moving her lips forward. 
Not now, Tiona. I said stopping her face from advancing. So you're Aegeus. Belkun's brother. Someone said with a blue-haired girl behind him. And you are. I said toward him. Aya, I have been wanting to meet you in a long time. I'm Hermes, god from Hermes Familia. Nice to meet you. He said extending his hand for a handshake. I see. For a long time. Does grandpa send you? I said with a smile on my face. Otto. You're rather sharp indeed, just like he said. Maybe I should watch my word in front of you. He said lowering his hat covering his smile. Suddenly, I felt the tension in the air. Welf is gritting his teeth together looking at another group of people coming. Maybe we should postpone our talk. Hermes said also noticing the situation. I agree. I said to him before walking even closer to the other. Everyone, let's talk in the tent. I said while starting walking toward my tent. Eventually, everyone gathered inside my tent where I found Revis is eating the food. You really can eat, do you? I said looking at her while she stopped her bite on the chicken as if a kid being busted while eating candy too much. It's okay, Revis just eats slowly. There's a guest coming over. I said while she quickly walked behind the bed bringing some more food to eat without disturbing or being disturbed. Alright, so tell me. What is actually happening? I asked them while sitting on my bed. Since there's no chair nearby. Then everyone started talking about their side of the story. Mikoto, which the girl with her black hair and eyes, carrying a katana quickly bowed down into Jiza asking for forgiveness toward Bell and his party. We're sorry for what we have done. She quickly said sincerely. Chigusa also lowering her head since it's her fault for being wounded. Please, no need to go that far. Bell quickly said feeling bad for having a girl doing it in front of him. Loki Familia, Ryu and me only watched from the sideline. Even though you asked for forgiveness over and over again. We would never forgive all of you. We almost died you know. Lily said coldly. Yeah, we can't forgive you that easily. Welf added in. We really. Are sorry. Jagusa said in a shy manner. It's normal for all of you to be mad at us, but please just throw all the blame to me. Mikoto said pleading for her party. No. I'm the one that had to take responsibility. I'm the one that made the decision. Kashima Uka said, the only man in the party with also black spike hair and eyes. But for me, I think that I made the right decision still. He said with a lot of conviction. You still dare talk like that, big man. Welf said glaring at him. Eventually, it became a glaring contest between both of them. Me too. I think that Uka-san made the right decision. If it's Lily or Welf, that being hurt and their life is threatened. I would also do the same. Bell said tightened his grip. Belsama. Lily looked at Bell. If Belsama said so. Lily said after thinking. We won't drag the problem further but don't think I agree with it, you hear. Welf said completing her sentences. Yes, that's a normal thing to do. Uka said while nodding his head. Mikoto, Bell and the other also relieved hearing it. Well, if I had to say. It's your familia that being lucky, you big size man. Revis said behind the bed but only her head popped out. What are you saying? Boka asked her. Well, if one of that boy's party is dead or maybe even that boy is the one that died in the dungeon. No one in your familia would be alive in a week's time. Revis said while looking at me. Just eat your food, Revis. I said without denying her words because it's the truth I would do if something happened. All right, let's close the case. We better talk about our next plan. Asfai, please. Hermes said to ease the mood around the tent. The next plan is, we are going to get out of the dungeon but waiting for Loki Familia to kill Goliath. They should continue their expedition in two days. Asfai said explaining toward Hestia Familia and Takamikazuchi Familia. Since for me and the other, we all already know about it. I also about to ask Finn to let me off the expedition and go with my Familia. Alright, then. How about we took some time to rest? Hermes said closing the conversation. Alright now, everyone out from my tent. I want to continue my sweet dream. I said while laying down on my bed. There are already two tents prepared for man and woman. Tioni said continuing my words. Then. Good night everyone. Bell said and walked out with the other. For some reason now my tent became something strange. 
Tiona decided to stay like usual, Rivas also here but Ace, Ryu, alongside Alicia added to the group. Tiona said in a cheerful manner that the more the merrier which made the place full of girls with me alone as a guy. Not that I care that much, so I quickly sleep forgetting everything. Getting some of my consciousness back from my sleep. I felt heavy, hard to breathe. Something is on top of my stomach. Quickly I open my eyes and oh boy, my bed is packed. The girls put the bed together to make it a bigger space to sleep. Ace on my left at the edge of my bed, Tiona on top of me then Ryu on my right followed with Alicia, Tioni, and Rivas. Aegeus. Aegeus. Should we go to Rivera right now? Ace said already waking up and asked when I looked at her. After she asked just now that I remember my promise. Ah, right. Wait a second. I said while started waking Tiona up and also the other. Hmm. Breakfast already? Tiona and Rivas said the same thing after waking up. No, we're eating outside. I said and made both of them somewhat gloomy. Tiona, Rivas san. Didn't we already plan this yesterday? Tioni said toward Tiona and Rivas. Hmm. Planning what are you talking about? I asked Tioni. Right. I said while looking at a group of people gathering outside the city. Who would have thought to visit the city with this lot of people? I said while looking at them. Belle is behind me pushing Hestia that looked tired. Are we going to visit the city or raid the city? I said beside Belle. Aegeus. Come here. Tiona shouted at me at the distance. Kemi-sama, why are you look different? Belle said while keep pushing Hestia. You know. Ha. Belkuen. I'm suppressing my divinity. Ha. How far is the city? Hestia said while catching her breath. Nisan, do you have something to help Kemi-sama? Belle said looking at me. I think for a while, yeah, I have Enkidu. I thought an open gate of Babylon. Nah. I let her suffer. I quickly change my initial thought. Sorry, Belle. Look like I can't. I said while walking toward the group which are Hermes and Asphi, Takamikazuchi familia member, some of Loki familia member, Lily, Wealth. It's amazing, Nisan, Kemisama. People build a city inside the dungeon. Bell said after we get inside the city. He running around like a child inside a playground. What? The stone for crafting is 13.000 Valis? Welf shouted after asking for a price for an item. This bag also 20.000 Valis. This is. Lily complained about a bag price since she lost the one she usually had. He. The price here is so expensive. Belle said looking around. Yes, that's why we're camping outside the forest. Tioni said. Is it? Willie's place is relatively cheap. I said remembering back in the day. Eh. One room is 100.000 Valis. How could you think it's cheap? Tiona said behind me. Hmm. 100.000 Valis. I asked unconsciously. Anyone seeing where Kamisama went to? Belle asked after I just said that. Ace pointing toward Hestia behind us that buying something. Hmm. Hestia, you just issued a quest you know. Hermes said walking past Hestia. Shut up already, Hermes. This is my money after all. Hestia said pouting after done the transaction. Hearing Hermes, I walked toward Hestia and clutched her face in my hand, how much did you have right now? I said with an irritating smile. Gah. Aegeus Kun. I have 70.000 Valis left. She said weakly. Ha you really are hard to control. I said releasing her. How cruel for you to say that. The quest is for your brother you know. Hestia said. It's not about the quest money you chibi goddess sama. I said glaring at her. You little runt. How dare you back then. Someone shouted behind us making me looked toward the source of it. Someone already threatened Bell but stopped after his friend told him about Ace and the other. Eventually, they left without saying anything. In the corner of my eyes, I could see Hermes smiling wider. Bell Kuhn. Come here. Smell this perfume. Hestia said to let herself go from me. She quickly used the perfume on her neck. Bell walked slowly and sniffed the scent, oh. It smell good isn't it Kemisama? Bell said cheerfully. Right? Hestia started to become happy. 
you just buy stuff like that in here. Do you have nothing else good to spend your money on, Hestia-sama? Lily said behind her. Hmm. You also buying that old looking bag? Hestia quickly replied to Lily. What can I do, we need this to went back to the surface. Lily said fighting with Hestia. Women also need perfume. Hestia said while staring sharply at each other. Hestia quickly turned her head toward Bell, Bell Kuen, you also didn't like a woman who smells bad do you? Hestia said. Ah. Hestia Sama. After this, we are about to take a bath. Do you want to come with us? Tioni said toward Hestia to stop the fight. Really? I want to. No, I have to. Hestia said with glimmering eyes. Lily will also come. Lily said behind Hestia. Hermes quickly grabbed on Bell while I'm being grabbed by Ryu. Aegeus. Can you help me? She asked. Sure, what do you want me to help with? I asked her with a questionable look. And no. Ryu. I know that you asked me for help but why asked me to stand guard when you're bathing? I said to her with my back facing her when she dipped herself in the water. I. I just want some alone time with you. Can't I? She said with a blush. Ha, alright. I will wait. I said while sitting on the ground. Not long after that, I could hear someone walking in a distance. Who? I said opening my eyes and glaring toward the distance. Nisan. I'm saved. He said while running to me. Nisan, what are you doing here? Belle asked me with a questionable look since I should be at the tent. I'm with Ryu. She asked for my help. I said while Ryu already covering her body and walked out from the water, is that, Belsan? Aegeus. She asked. Yeah, it's nothing to worry about. I said to her. I'm sorry, Nisan for disturbing your time. Bell said in the usual bowing manner. It's fine, but what are you doing here? I asked him but he quickly turned red and staggering from answering my question. It's fine if you can't answer it. Now go, took some rest. I said while patting his head. He nodded and started walking toward the direction I pointed at. Aegeus. Are you ready to go? Ryu said behind me with her white clothes and green cape. NN. Let's go. I said after looking at her. Where's your brother? Ryu asked. You said that you want some time alone with me. I said with a questionable look toward her. We took a walk deeper into the forest where people never came by and there's a little mound on the ground with a flag and weapons stabbed into the ground. Ryu brought a flower she bought from Rivera and I walking beside her. So, this is the place. I asked her after looking at the grave. Ryu nod and began placing the flower in front of each weapon. I found some clue. Ryu said after placing the last flower. Clue about what? I asked her. There's still a survivor from Evelis member. She said while tightening her grip. Then? What do you want to do? I asked her while placing my hand on her shoulder to calm her down. Will you get angry at me? She said after turning her body to me. No, I will support you fully. I said caressing her hair. Thank you. She said hugging me. But. Don't push yourself too far. You can't rank up, right? I said which made her release her hug and looked at me. Join my familia. I said which made her stunned. I, I can't. I don't know where is Astriya-sama. Ryu said hugging me again but turned to sadness in her expression. You don't need to. I said while removing the hug and walked a few steps backward. I pulled out a sword, rule breaker. Do you trust me? I asked her when she looked at me. Her shocked face turned into a smile and nod nn. I trust you. Do it. She said while opening her arms for me to stab her body. Without much thinking, I stabbed her with rule breaker and she felt the pain from the purple lightning. When the lightning subdued, I used pain breaker to relieve her pain and brought her to the tent. Nisan. Bell greeted me as if I'm his savior when I enter the tent. Inside my tent is like a party going on forever but everyone stopped what they are doing after they looked at me carrying Ryo. Aegeus Kuen. What happened? Even Hestia quickly alarmed after such a sight. Nothing happened. I did this, so you can relax, Hestia-sama. I only need some of your help. I said while placing Ryu down on the bed. What do you want me to do? Hestia said looking at Ryu that's still unconscious. 
let her inside the familia. I said while everyone surprised to hear it. Luckily Hermes and Asphi are not around. Maybe they already went to sleep since the night already coming. Hestia nodded seriously at me. Everyone, please wait outside. I said to everyone. The other outside the familia nodded and started to walk out. But, Aegeus Kuhn. I can't let my divinity out in here. Hestia said toward me. I will handle it. I said while opening Gate of Babylon as much as I could. Summoning Enkidu and curled them together making a layer of ball to contain Hestia's divinity. TCH. You really had something to help me this morning. Hestia said. Without much talk, Hestia quickly pricked her finger with a needle and draw a line of blood behind Ryu's back. Astria's symbol is gone and only status and level could be seen. Hestia then drew her symbol while Ryu is regaining her consciousness. Lu. Level 5. Hestia said looking at me with disbelief face. Is. It done. Aegeus. Ryu asks slowly. I hold her face gently with a smile, yes, it's done. I said to her smile. The divinity in the air quickly absorbed by Enkidu and made it glow brighter. After all the procedure is done, I open Enkidu back and let the other inside the tent again. My morning came in silence. I could hear people talking outside my tent and I wake up with the position in bed the same as yesterday. It felt like a deja vu at this rate. Today, Ace, Tiona, Tioni, and Alicia will head back to the surface with the rest of the expedition. Leaving me down here with my familia after I asked Finn for permission. He also stated that they will take a day off after returning just then the next day will sell off the resource they got in my gate of Babylon. So not many changes in his plan which made him easily say yes. Everyone, wake up. Especially you, Tiona. You're crushing me. I said while moving everybody out of my way. Except for Ryu that looked tired from yesterday. You are. It hurts. Tiona said after being thrown to the ground. What happened to you, Aegeus Kuhn? It's still early in the morning. Mu, Tioni also said. Alicia only stayed silent and sit on the ground while Ace already dodged and landed safely. Revis for some reason managed to get back to the bed and continue sleeping. Have you forget? All of you supposed to get ready to went back to the surface. I said which made them enlightened. Ah. You are right. Tioni said. I don't want to leave you. Me too. Tiona said and followed by Ace. I will visit as soon as I can. It's just a day. I said with an irritating tone. Before that, Aegeus. Tiona said looking at me with a serious face. What again this time? I asked her. Fight me. Tiona said giving short answers. Ha! Huh. Didn't we spar already two days ago? I said to her. Accept her, Aegeus Kuhn. This time is different. Tioni said noticing her sister's seriousness. Fine, get ready in five. If she can't move again like last time, you're the one taking her. I said to Tioni while stretching my body on my bed. Are you sure about your choice, Tiona? Tioni asked her sister before the fight. Tiona nod and looked at me like a tiger eyeing her prey. The sparring space is empty. No one is using it since everyone is busy getting ready to go back to the surface. Finn, Riveria, and Gareth stumbled upon us coincidentally. They also decide to watch the fight with the other. Belle's party, Hestia and the other rescue group which is the party that is made to rescue Belle also came after being told when Belle went to my tent. Some of the Loki familia members also coming when they heard about the fight. Why is Tiona-san fighting Nisan again? Belle said after looking at the field when they arrive. Hmm. You didn't know, Belkun. Hermes asked Bell. Did you know something, Hermes Sama? Bell asked him a question. Amazonists only marry the strong. That's in their nature, so when choosing their partner. The male had to beat the woman in their full strength. It could be said that your brother being proposed right now. Your brother might already know about it. Hermes said. Before we fight. Mind telling me why you asked for this, Tiona? I shouted at her that standing at the distance. Or maybe not. Hermes said correcting his words while holding his laughter. Ugh. Do you think Nisan would win? Bell asked Ryu that standing beside Hestia. He had to win. At least I could get a punch at that flat-chested goddess. Hiya ha 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 ha. Hestia said with a little bit of craziness in her. 
just fight me, with all your strength. Tiona said playing with her Urga, the double-bladed sword. Ha fine. I will fight you fair and square. I said while summoning Kansho and Bakuya out. Everyone became tensed from the atmosphere blowing in the field. Finally, you decide to get serious, Aegeus. Please, defeat me. Tiona said whispering with her sister beside her hearing it. I played with Kansho and Bakuya for a bit before putting the end of the hilt together. The hilt began to shine with light, and I pull the hilt further from each of the blade, double-bladed mode. Overedge mode. I said and the light dimmed out. The blade became one and the overedge mode from Kansho and Bakuya became double sword weapon like a Mia altar used. That blade is bad news. Finn said after looking at Kansho and Bakuya. Yeah, too many varieties. He could fight in any condition depending on the situation of the battlefield. Riveria said. His strength also no joke. He could play it without displaying any weight on the weapon. Gareth said. Here I come. Tiona said and dashing toward me with intent to kill. Ha this already turned rather bothersome. I said while standing there without any motion. I lift up my weapon and blocked Tiona's strike. The blade clashed between us and I pushed her away. Prepare yourself. I said when our blade clashed. After Tiona land on the ground, she lost sight of me and couldn't see where I was. She flinched after feeling a cold wind behind her. Nice guess. I said waving Kancho Bakuya toward her. She quickly bent herself forward and blocked my strike. Try again. I said appearing behind her and kick her abdomen and send her flying. She vomited some blood from her mouth before landing on the ground again. The muscle around her eyes began to tighten while her eyes dilated with anger. White steam coming out from her body. Tioni san What happened to her? Bell asked Tioni that already walked watching the fight. It's her skill. Berserk and intense heat. She became even stronger than me in that mode. Tioni said and quietly watched the fight. For the purpose or respect. I wait for Tiona to strike again and we start fighting again. To my surprise, her strength is even more powerful now. I could feel some force pushing me backward. Eventually, after a continuous clashing together, Tiona started to bleed from her eyes. I quickly ended the fight by maximizing my top speed and hit her behind her neck. Her eyes turned white before returned back to her brown eyes. I quickly cast Pain Breaker to heal her and catch her before hitting the ground. You push yourself too hard. I said after catching her and flicked her forehead. Without saying anything she used her last strength to pull my face and kiss her, hee hee. Now, I can kiss you. She said with a smile before her body slumped like a jelly. I can't move. I can't move. She shouted. Ha what is that skill you use? I asked her. Which one? She asked while I carrying her to the spectator. The steamy one. I said to her. Hee hee it's called intense heat. It's cool right? She said with a wide smile. Did your sister have it too? I asked with my eyebrow lifted in curious. No, only me had it. She said with pride. So that's why you're losing in chest size with your sister. I said teasing her. Her face shocked with the realization, is that true? She quickly asked me. Well. I don't know but something had to be burned to produce that much heat. If it's your fat then it made sense. Ha 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 ha. Alright, that was a joke. I said laughing really hard. That's a great fight. Well done, Aegeus san, Tiona san. Finn said as a greeting when we arrived at the group. Thanks, but now. Tioni. Bring your sister back. I said calling to Tioni. Ha. Huh. Why it had to be me. Tioni grumbled when walking to me. You are a great sister, Tioni. Finn said toward Tioni. Ah, oh, Captain. I will take Tiona back with me first. Tioni said in a pleased tone and walked with Tiona on her back. How was my fight, Tioni? Tiona asked even being carried roughly. You didn't even stand a chance. Tioni said. Right? Tiona for some reason became happier. Now, we will be going back first. Take care of yourself. Finn said leaving with the other to the surface. Aegeus Sama. I, I will leave first. Alicia said timidly before walking with the other. Nisan. Congratulations on your engagement. Belle said coming to me. Me too, I'm happy to have a new sister. 
Ryu said toward me. Engagement? I asked them both. You beat, Tiona-san. Bell said with excitement. What did that to do with engagement? I asked him confusingly. Ha! Huh. You really don't know, Aegeus. Kuan. Hermes said, coming to me. Receiving her invitation to all-out fight is like a proposal to her. Ryu said to me which made me realize. So that's her aim. I said enlightened by Ryu's statement. Well, nothing I can do about it. I said and brushed it off. It's quite rare though. Amazonas never tend to ask for an all-out fight like that to a male for hand in marriage. Hermes added up again. I completely ignored Hermes about the fact and looked around. Bell, where's Hestia-sama? I asked since only she is the one missing. Kami-sama. She went back to our tent with loud laughter. She said that she wanted to write a letter and sending it to Loki-sama. Bell said. Ha that goddess. I said giving up. Well, let's take another day of rest while waiting for some of Loki familia members that's still recuperating. I said and lead the group back to the tent. I went back to my tent so I can move everything into Bell's tent, while Bell went back to his tent with the other, continue what they are doing before. Revis, why don't you go outside once in a while? I asked this glutton that's still laying in bed looking at the ceiling. Nothing good is outside but inside here is warm. She said turning her body over. We're moving tent. Everyone already doing their thing outside. Only you are here now. I want to pack things here. I said to get her out. But you're here. She said looking at me. Of course I'm here. I'm the one packing the things up. I said with a little bit annoyed. She sighed hard and eventually go outside with me. Hey, Aegeus San. Have you been in a situation where you just get out from hard stuff in life and only want to enjoy life? She asked out of the blue. I stunned for a second while the tent drowned slowly to Gate of Babylon. Yes, I have. I answer her. Then, what do you do after that? She asked looking toward the dungeon ceiling. I enjoy it. To my fullest, with the way I wanted to. Doing everyday stuff I never got to do. I said and for the first time, she smiled and looked at me. Then, I have decided. I will join your familia. I want to go on an adventure. Revis said with her red eyes the same as mine. My familia? You could see with your own eyes how my goddess and you asked to join in. I asked her with a doubtful face. But there's a reason for you to stick with her right? She said. Yeah, true. Joining other familia might get some annoying rules. While in this one is only family. She's the goddess of family after all. I said smiling on my own. Something terrible is happening. Uka. The man from Takamikazuchi Familia said running toward us. What happened? I asked him. I saw Bell running to someplace with a worried face. So I decided to follow him secretly then I found that he's surrounded by adventurers. I can't take them alone, that's why I quickly run back and notice the other. He said explaining the whole thing and went to grab his weapon after showing the direction. Ha, huh, just what is my stupid brother doing without telling me? I said while pulling out the mana. I'm coming with you. I need to greet fellow familia members right? She said while jumping on Vimana. I sit and a throne appeared for me to sit, sure. Hold on tight. I said while we started to fly toward Bell. We arrived shortly and spot the place where the fight is going. At the top of the cliff, I notice it's not an adventurer. The adventurers are all at the middle of the cliff watching Bell in an open space. I landed at the top with Revis. Hermes-sama. Asfai-san. I said after noticing who it was. So, all this is your doing. I said with a deadly glare at him. Wait. Aegeus Kun. It's for the best of your brother. Hermes quickly said in a panic. Speak, before I send you back to God Realm or maybe I decided to erase you forever. I said threatening him. I told you, Hermes-sama. It's a bad idea. Asfai said beside him. Your brother is too naive. He needed to know the dark side of life. Hermes said watching the fight. I walked beside him and could see the adventurer he fight. He's not totally invisible for my eyes but still a little transparent. Wrong answer, Hermes-sama. My brother didn't need to know about the dark side of life. I said after sighing hard. So what? You gonna protect him forever? Hermes said looking at me. No, 
he's an idiot that will befriend the people that do a bad thing to him or even help them to get better in life. It's already a miracle that he didn't decide to help everyone in the city. He will know about human nature eventually. But I'm sure he will do everything he could to help one girl from crying. I said toward Hermes about how stupid my brother is. He's after all still me without the mix of memory. Not long after that, the rescue group coming and started fighting with all the other adventurers that defending the fight from getting disturbed. Hestia also came running and seemed displeased by all the fighting so she decided to release her divinity. Who? Hestia started releasing her divinity. Hermes said from up top with us four. The other adventurer still respects the gods. So all of them start running from the angry goddess with her divinity. While the goddess reunited with Bell. The ceiling started to tremble and became dark. Some of the big crystal shattered and a big black ball rolling off the ground but before it landed. The ball turned into a monster. What is that thing? Asphi asked after looking at the big monster that dropped down in the middle of the forest. It's the juggernaut. Revis said while her body trembled in fear and about to fall. Revis, are you okay? I asked while holding her on both her shoulders. She nodded but her body won't stop shaking. Breathe. I said toward her to control her breathing. Asphi, ask for help from Rivera town. Look like our way out is sealed. Hermes said after looking at the crumbling wall. Asphi quickly moved without answering toward Rivera. Is she okay? Dot. Hermes said asking me that helping Revis to calm down. She's getting better. I answer him because Revis started to close her eyes and breathe slowly. So, Aegeus Kuan. Are you going to kill that monster? Hermes said while at the same time. The monster started to roar loudly. He screamed loud enough to shake the whole forest and people's hearts. The roar making all the monster on the floor to become hostile like the usual monster. Some of the adventurers got caught in a fight with the black goliath in the distance. Oh, Bell and his group have started moving. Hermes said looking at Bell and the other which already started running. Then, I will leave it to him for now. I said after letting Rivas sit down. That's a surprising answer. Hermes said to me. I don't need your opinion, I said before he started talking again. Soon, people from Rivera started to gather and brought a heavy weapon out from the town toward the cliff to shoot the monster down. Every adventurer could be seen as they started grouping and helping each other. Non-combatant and supporters stay at the back line to help the tired adventurer to rest and stay hydrated. A battle cry from left and right could be heard. From one of the cliffs, light could be seen. The mage started chanting their magic to be shot at the same time. The monster realized the magic that is being charged. He started to move taking step by step but kept getting slowed by the adventurer. He decided to use one of his skills, howl, which sent a sound wave toward the adventurer. Closing in, Bell started to look at the situation and went on offense. His white hair really stand out. He jumped toward the monster's thigh and cut the skin using his knife down to the bottom. The black goliath felt the damage and starting to roar in pain. His movement stopped for a second and the mage had done their chant. Everyone go back. We're about to launch our attack. Someone shouted. Everyone quickly jumped back from the big monster. Release it. He shouted and the mage starting casting the big magic to Black Goliath. All of the magic getting cast and start engulfing the monster with fire, thunder, ice, even light magic that immobilized the monster. The juggernaut start to fell on his knee while part of his face is gone leaving bone that could be seen. Take it down. The guy with black eye patched said. Every adventurer rushed about to deal the finishing blow to this abomination. But the monster started to glow with red light and his face start to grow again. It started to stand up again and his condition started to return back to normal as if he just came down from the ceiling. Even the ceiling started to glow red as if helping the monster. Black Goliath started to run rampage and slammed his fist to the ground. His fist is so strong even making the ground shake. Bell stand up quickly with wound all around his body, he looked at the monster as if a big mountain that he needed to climb. The fight started again and the monster around the floor also started gathering together and overwhelmed the adventurer that started getting tired. Bell San. Please handle the monster around here. We will hold the Goliath. I have asked people to search for your brother. Ryu said toward Bell while standing beside Asphi. He should be covering for Hermes Sama but I don't know where they're now after checking. Asphi said. It's dangerous, Ryu San, Asphi San. Bell said. We have no other way. We can't get beaten by it. Given time, 
the mage could launch another attack. If it didn't work, we will do it over and over again until it worked. Ryu said before dashing rapidly toward the Goliath with Asphi. Bell looked around. People fighting the monster, chaos happened right and left. Everything is a horrible sight. While his hand started to make crackling sound and little blue light started to gather in his hand. While on the other side behind him. Uka looked at Bell and realized the monster started to move toward him after sensing the magic that gather in his hand. Chigusa. My shield. He shouted. Chigusa looked confused about why he needed a shield before she looked at Bell standing in an open space with magic in his hand. As quick as a lightning she realized. No. You could die. Chigusa quickly said. Chigusa. He once again shouted and looked at her. I. I. He about to say something but no word came out from his mouth. After gritting his teeth for a while he smiled toward her, I don't want to be a coward again. He said. Suddenly, someone clapped behind both of them. Good resolution. Aegeus walked out from the forest with a golden glow and also crackle sound in his hand. But I will take it from here. He said while glaring at the monster. I could see Bell in the distance and Ryu with Asphi distracting the Goliath. Bell pointing his hand toward the Goliath. Ryu. Go back. Asphi said noticing Bell about to shoot his magic. Ryu and Asphi quickly backing out and the Goliath looked at Bell. Bell quickly shouted the chant to his magic, Firebolt, while the monster used Howl to block Bell's magic. Bell's Firebolt collided with the Howl but only getting weaker slightly and blew the head off from the monster. This time the monster could still move even before he regenerates and caught Bell off guard. He slammed the ground around Bell sending him flying and with a fast speed he regenerates his head and sent a slap to Bell that floated in the air. Uka quickly jumped and defend the blow for Bell while both of them got thrown into a distance. Ryu seeing the scene quickly charged at the Goliath but lose her cool. Suddenly a little golden ripple appeared on the sky and a certain staff peeked its head out. The staff started to produce light that scattered across the forest, healing everyone in its path. Ryu look at the light froze for a second making the Goliath seen this as a chance and throw a punch at her. Ryu quickly shut her eyes embracing the impact because of her loss of focus. You really made me worry so much. Ryu heard someone speaking to her ears. She quickly opened her eyes again and see what happened. I jumped and arrived beside Ryu and summoned row AIAs which blocked the Goliath's punch and pull Ryu by her waist closer to me. We landed as if nothing blocking our landing. Aegeus. You're late. She said, pouting her cheek. Ha ha ha. Sorry, my little girl. I said patting her head. Suddenly a bell voice could be heard from my hand. My hand had been covered by a golden light. Also, someone behind me produced the same sound but with bluish silvery light covering his hand. Both me and Bell stand side by side with Ryu that I hug. The bell rang together. Roar across the dungeon floor. Everyone stopped what they're doing and looked at the source of the voice. Feeling threatened, the black Goliath roared calling for other monsters to gather around. Everyone started chasing the monster and arrived at the open space where we stand to protect the light that gave them hope. To hold the Goliath, even Welf used his magic weapon and lit it on fire. Gate of Babylon. I said. After collecting a lot of weapons that are being distributed for the adventurer, I could produce hundreds of Gate of Babylon and attack the low-level monster at the same time. I'm sorry for not using my partner but you're too weak. I said while pulling out a sword. A silver sword with a golden and blue pattern on its hilt. The sword started to glow golden producing a blinding light. From every corner of the dungeon floor, a golden light started to rise and went to my sword as I lifted it up. The sword looked so majestic even making people wanted to bow their heads to it. Their gaze locked at my sword as the light started to gather and making it brighter and brighter. Let's end this, Bell. I said to Bell that nodded and pulled his leg back about to swing it. Hi. Nisan. He shouted ready. Our swords glowed with silver light and golden light. The Goliath started to strike toward us but blocked by row AIAs. Let's go. Bell. X. Or yeah, both of us started to swing our weapon. Caliba. I shouted as the golden wave of sword strike started to shot toward Goliath. Combined with the silver strike from Bell and swallow the Goliath with its light until the Goliath release his final roar before completely vanished. After the strike, a golden pillar flared up to the sky and started to dissipate. Everyone stunned by the scene looking at both the people that kill the monster in the middle. 
people started to cheer loudly one by one as the dust from the Goliath spread across the dungeon floor. You really like to show off. Ryu said before kissing me on the spot. Bel Kuen. Aegeus Kuen. Hestia shouted from the distance while running to us. Thank God, both of you are okay. Hestia said after catching her breath. Everyone started to gather while cheering out loud. Ha 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 ha. Tonight. No one is sleeping. We party. The eye-patched guy said which named Boris Elder. How do you feel? Standing beside me. I asked Bell. NN. I will catch up to you, Nissan and in the future. I will fight again beside you. He said with a wide smile. Don't make me wait for long. I said to him before walked together with Ryo back to the camp. Aegeus. Aegeus. Wake up. Aegeus. Someone said while tapping on my cheek, if only the tap is gentle. Ugwagu. I scream after my head being embedded in my bed. Quickly I pull my head out and look at her. Real. For real. Can you tap me slowly? I tap caressing my cheek. Her smiling face turned into a shy embarrassing face with a red blush on her cheeks, I'm sorry. I really bad at this. She said while looking away from me. Now I feel bad. I thought when looking at her. I sighed and look away, no, it's fine. I said. Suddenly someone came inside. Nisan. You awake. Everyone is waiting outside. Bell said when looking at me that sitting on my bed. Bell San, we will be there in a minute. Ryu said with a straight tone. I looked at her and her blushing face already turned to her usual poker face. Too fast. I thought when looking at her. Ahaha. Thank you, Ryu San. It's kinda hard to waken my brother. He said while laughing a little but quickly shut up after I glare at him. He quickly walked sneakily outside maintaining the same look. Ha, huh, what kind of brother mocking his own brother? I asked after Bell already outside. I looked at Ryu, let's go. We need to get ready. I said getting off from my bed but Ryu still sitting there looking at something. I follow her gaze and she's looking at Rivas that's still sleeping. Yesterday, she trembling non-stop by the thought of Juggernaut. It might be because of her past, so I'm not going to ask much about it. I brought her back to the tent and let her rest. When the Black Goliath is dead and we went back. She's already sleeping on the bed soundlessly. It must have been a really bad dream for her. Rivas, wake up. We're leaving. I said while tapping her arm. Hmm. The breakfast? She asked after rubbing her eyes. Rivas. Is that really the first thing you asked when you wake up? I asked her while looking at her weirdly. Hmm. I'm hungry. She said while looking at her stomach. Alright, we will eat while on the way. I said giving up with her. Ah oh no. Aegeus. Is she looked somewhat different? A little softer than before. Ryu said whispering to me. Don't ask me. Even if she became softer, her appetite is still the same. I said to avoid trouble. I quickly packed everything left while going outside with everyone. Here. Your breakfast. I said while giving Rivas her food. We walked to a group that been gathering together. Bell noticed our arrival quickly wave his hand to us, Nissan. Over here. After we gather together, finally we walk to the surface while killing our way. Yuwa. The sun felt so great. Hestia quickly shouted when we get outside. Let's go home, Bell Kuen, she said after linking her arm with Bell's arm. Nnnggh. I will also be going back. Welf said after stretching himself. Lily too. Lily said about to slump to the floor. Then, we will go on our way. Hope we meet again, Aegeus Kuen, Bell Kuen, and also Hestia. Hermes said before leaving with Asphi. I will report to the guild before going home. All of you can go back on your own for now. I said to the bell, Hestia. Oh, one more thing. Hestia, help Rivas into the familia. I said while looking toward Rivas. She flinched and looked at us. What are you confused about? Welcome to the family. I said toward her. She eventually smiled at us, thank you, she said before leaving with Hestia and Bell. What about you, Ryu? I said to her. I will go back to Hostess of Fertility to talk with Mamma Mia. Ryu said with a smile. Alright, 
tell me what she said. I will help if you need it. I said while caressing her head. She nodded before walking and vanish in the crowd. I took a walk toward the guild and for some reason, people kept staring at me and whispering for themselves. I hope they stop doing that. I thought before entering the guild building. Ina Chan dot. I call Ina that shriek at the reception table. Ha. Huh. What do you want, Aegis Kuan? She said, clutching her head. Ah, uh, why are you so cold to me now? I said after walking closer to her. Just say it before my head exploded. Ina glare at me. Her conduct made me smile and look at her, I had two more members in the familia and this is the proof for my rank up to level 4. I said while giving her the paper. Who's the member in your familia? She asked not too shocked by the fact anymore. The Gale Ryu Lion and Revis. Level 5 and the other we need to wait for tomorrow. I said which made her looked at me with dilated eyes. Ha, huh, so the reason you went to our Inasama back then is to free her then invite her? Ina said to me feeling tired. I can't deny the former but not the latter, wait but I did invite her. Hmm. This is complicated. How should I explain this? I said thinking about my answer. Enough just don't talk anymore. My work is piling up because of you. Ina said stopping me from saying anything further. Then, let me use the resource room to drop some of my items from the expedition. I said toward her. Ah, uh, yeah. Of course, this way then. Ina said walking me toward the room we used back then. Without any chit chat, I pour all the magic stone and filled up the room even more than before. This. This is high level magic stone. Nay. Aegis Kun. You didn't steal this from Loki Familia did you? Ina said flustered by the amount of high level magic stone. Of course not, they're magic stone kept in separate places. Do you want me to put it here? I asked Ina. No. We had another room for them. Ina said still looking at the magic stone and even paying close attention to it. Ina san. I don't have all day. I said to wake her up from her dream. Ah. Yes. This way then. Ina said walking toward four room beside my room. Is this the room? I asked her. Yeah, the room is bigger than yours. Ina said opening the door and we enter. It's the same empty room but certainly bigger even twice the size of my storage room. Then I will put it in the corner. I said while taking out boxes by boxes filled with magic stones and filled up the room. This is certainly a big hall. Ina said after looking at the boxes. Yeah, they went all out since I bring all their loot but in exchange, I got to go down there easily. I said looking at the boxes. It might even be more than yours. Ina said looking at the boxes. No. I won. He he he. It's just because they stuffed it in the boxes and also I left out some dungeon drop. I said with a smile. Alright then, it might take a few days to count all of it. So, took some rest. I don't want you to get sick. Ina said started her lecture. Okay. Okay. Stop with the long lecture. Since when you're this concerned about me. I said stopping her and walking outside. Can't you stop and listen to me for a second. Mudat. Ina talked in complaint toward me. I will when I'm free. I had to go to Tower of Babel after all. I said waving goodbye to her. The sun still high in the sky with people still walked around the town. I really miss the crowd for some reason or maybe it's the sun. Far in my sight, a majestic tower stood in the middle of the town. The place where only God could rent or use for their purposes like Donatus or Hephaestus rent the floor to sell her familia's weapon. I walked closer and turned to the side of the building since there's an elevator that I could use. Mortal could only use it to reach a certain floor that allowed. I pressed the number 7 and being greeted by a huge amount of weapon being displayed behind glass. Walking for a few minutes around the floor, I got in front of Hephaestus's room. Excuse me. I said after knocking on the door. Come in. Hephaestus said behind the door. Oh, everyone is gathering here. I said after looking around the room. Finn, Riveria, Gareth, Tsubaki, and Hephaestus are inside the room. We are just about to talk about you. Finn said looking toward me. Hmm. What do you guys talk about? If you don't mind telling me. I said while making a conversation while making my way to sit beside Tsubaki which is the only empty spot left. It's not something bad or anything. 
We are about to postpone the selling for our resource since you might be tired from the expedition. Finn said explaining. Hmm. Then, where do I put the resource? I got it in me. I said while turning toward Hephaestus. Before that, it would be nice if you sign this contract first. Hephaestus said before giving me a paper for me to sign. Hmm. The resource from this expedition would only be sold to Hephaestus Familia with 30% more price than usual price. The profit will be divided with Loki Familia. 70 for me and 30 for them. I don't see any problem. Even if some of the material I got is more than 70% but I still have to thank them to get me down there in the fastest time possible. I said reading the paper and then signed it. Thank you, Aegeus Kuan. Now Finn, care to sign the paper. Hephaestus said while Tsubaki giving Finn the paper. He also read it for a second before signed the paper. Then, with this. We have finished the joint expedition. Please say my thanks with Loki. Hephaestus said toward Finn while Tsubaki gave us the copy of it. And for Aegeus Kuan. The debt your familia had will be paid using the money you gain. How about that? Hephaestus said toward me. It's for the best. I said toward Hephaestus. Then, we don't need this paper. She said while taking out a piece of paper from her table. Wait. I quickly stop her from ripping the paper. What is it, Aegeus Kuan? Hephaestus said in confusion. What is that paper? I asked her while focusing on the paper. Hmm. This is the price for the weapon Hestia asked from me. Hephaestus said explaining to me. Then. What are you gonna do with it? I asked her. I gonna ripped it. The paper is connected with one another. With this, she will know that the debt is paid in full. Hephaestus explaining. Hmm. I see. Then please keep the paper intact. At least with this, she won't just lay off at home. I said with an evil smile on my face. Sure, I also feel that I need to punish her for hitchhiking in my familia for too long. Hephaestus said after thinking for a while and smile happily. Alright, now that everything is settled. We will take our leave, there's still something we need to finish. Finn said saying goodbye and bowed toward Hephaestus and looked at me. I will leave the rest to you. Aegeus San. He said before walking outside together with Riveria and Gareth. Then, Tsubaki San. Should we head to the place to drop the resources? I asked her while Tsubaki looked at Hephaestus for a second before nodded at me. I stood up and bowed toward Hephaestus, Hephaestus Sama, thank you for the opportunity. I will take my leave. I said saying goodbye before leaving the room with Tsubaki. So, where are we going, Tsubaki-san? I asked her while we take a walk around the city heading toward a certain direction. It's our familia base of course. We got a storage house over there. She said giving me a thumbs up. After walking across the city. We arrived at Hephaestus' familia base. It's more like a blacksmith town. Everyone got their own workshop and also a house close to it. Different from Familia that tend to build a base for every Familia member to live. Hephaestus let them stay in their own house to let them keep their own techniques in smithing. This way. Tsubaki said leading me toward the warehouse. Everything inside piled up with resources. They even manage the place by putting one type of item in each container. You can put it here, we will sort the item for ourselves. She said to me after opening the warehouse. Ah. No. I will help you sort them. I said while there's already empty container waiting for item drop that came from the expedition. Without much talking, I quickly sort the item with Gate of Babylon and pour them in with each container for one type of drop item. Oh. You really help us big time. Now we only need to count the item. So, please wait for the money, Aegeus San. Tsubaki said with a smile. Sure, I don't really mind as long as I got the money. I said before saying goodbye and leave Tsubaki doing her job. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.